What is going on Rocket League player? In this video, I'm going to show you eight Rocket League life hacks that are going to blow your mind. Enjoy. Have you ever been in a post-game casual lobby just waiting and waiting for other players to join? You might have said something like, dude, the normal queue doesn't even take this long. Uh, I'm just gonna go back to menu. Well, you probably didn't know that you can double search. Nani? Yep. Instead of going back to menu, just go ahead and restart the search from inside the post-game lobby. Then, whichever picks up a match first, wins. Shout out to my boy Smuffin for that tip. This life hack is going to show you how to turn 50-50s into 70-30s. This one is huge, boys and boys, and I will show you the clip of exactly how powerful it is. So check this out. And it's as simple as it looks. All it takes is just a little bit of timing. To achieve this kind of 50-50, aka 70-30, is by keeping your car close to the ball and timing your jump so that your car is perfectly centered on the ball as the opponent slams it into you. This pretty much turns your car into a wall that the ball can't get around, forcing it to bounce off of the front of your car once the opponent's car's animation has ended. This has uses for pretty much every single aspect in the game and is heavily used in 1v1s, but you can honestly use it in every game mode because it just sets you up to be more successful in your 50-50s, which are now 70-30s. Have you ever been playing and said something like, oh, I didn't see that guy there? Or you struggle with your positioning because you can't see who is challenging the ball and from where? Hmm, do I have a life hack for you? We're going to hop into the menu and go into settings. If you tap over to interface, you'll see an option that lets you change nameplate settings. And you can change these to whatever you want, but most importantly, you can change the size of the icon, which helps a ton if you're trying to figure out where everyone is on the field. If they're annoying to you, you can make them smaller, or vice versa. You can even adjust if it displays their name or just a symbol above their car. Literally every single Rocket League player has struggled with this one I'm about to show you. And it might be the most frustrating thing to happen in Rocket League. Get it! With the exception of demos, of course. No life hacks for that one, except, you know, don't get demoed. But that's a different video for a, a different day. Anyways, what I'm talking about here is accidental misflicks. Which, fun fact, are the second leading cause for aneurysms in the world. Don't believe me? Google it. So, how do we fix this? A couple different ways actually, but I'm going to show you the life hack way. Easiest way to fix this glitch, because let's be honest, it's Psyonix's fault whenever this happens, is to hop into menu again and adjust the controller dodge zone. This controls how far your analog stick must be from its center point for your car to activate the flick animation when you double tap A. If you increase it, that increases the distance it must travel and vice versa. Increasing this by just a little bit can reduce your miss flicks by a very large margin. I know we've all shared this moment here and it's a wonderful whiffing moment where you completely miss the ball when trying to hit it off the wall and all you can say in response is, oops. Well, there's a secret way that you can tell that the ball is on the wall before you even go up to hit it. Check it out. The ball indicator on the ground is your friend. For some of you, it's your only friend. But don't worry fam, I'll, I'll be your friend, don't worry. If of course you like and subscribe that is. Nah, <laughs> okay, no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. My, my friendship isn't conditional like that. I wouldn't stoop that low. Anyways, when the ball rolls up the wall, quickly take a glance at the ball indicator to see where the indicator is touching the wall. 
If the indicator is touching this lower portion of the wall right here, or close to it, that means the ball is either on the wall or extremely near it. This is what it looks like from the side view. And here's an example of when the indicator is pretty far from that sweet spot I just showed you. And this is how far the ball is off the wall with the indicator in that position. So as you can see from pretty much any vantage point on the field, if you take a quick glance at the indicator on the ground, that'll give you a better perspective of how far away the ball is from the wall, especially if you're coming up behind the ball. Let's say if you're going for like an air dribble or a ceiling shot or something like that. If you've seen my camera settings video, highly suggest checking that bad boy out, link in the description below. You'll hear me say multiple times that maximizing your field of view is very important. But you know what gets in the way of that regardless of how you adjust your camera settings? The hood size. You can actually increase and decrease that to whatever suits your gaming experience. These settings are found in the exact same place as the nameplate adjustments. Have you ever gone up for an aerial where the ball was close to the ceiling and you say to yourself, no, oh, that's, that's not hitting the ceiling. It's just gonna float over there. Or you think to yourself that it's for sure going to hit the ceiling. So you try to anticipate one of those moves. In either case, and especially if you're a new player, you're gonna miss this more often than you hit it. So here's a life hack to fix that. Well, you know how there's a ball indicator on the ground? Well, for certain maps like Champions Field, and I don't know why this is only on certain maps, Psionics, this is a question for you to answer, I guess. There's also a ball indicator on the ceiling to let you know if it's gonna hit or not. It's this super thin line that expands outwards as opposed to inwards. And here's how you use it more effectively. Unlike the ground indicator, it doesn't do the best job in letting you know if it is going to hit the ceiling. But after some practice in using the indicator, you will soon get a better feel of where the ceiling is. The life hack here is to use the Champions Field map, for example, whenever you're in free play. What this is doing is conditioning you to better understand where the ceiling is when the ball is close to it. With more practice on this map and free play, you'll have better reads in the game. I think many of us playing the game have been in a situation where you don't have a lot of boost, but for whatever reason, you are especially motivated to go up for an aerial that you have absolutely no right going up for. It all happens, we all do it, but you went up for it, you shouldn't have, the other player beat you, and now you're just floating through the air contemplating why you're even up there in the first place. In the arms of the angel. Yeah, we've all been there. Something that I see a lot of lower ranked players do is not use their boost to get back down to the ground. It's simple guys. The same energy you use to go up, use it to go down. Don't have any boost? Don't worry, because that's where this final life hack comes into play. Fun fact, if your car is suspended in the air, and you hold right trigger, this will actually cause your car to move forward by a little tiny margin. But that tiny margin can sometimes make the difference between getting the goal, getting the save, or just being able to rotate back on defense effectively. So the secret here is if you've gone for an aerial and you miss, and you don't have boost to get back down, still point your car towards the ground and hold right trigger, or whatever you use to accelerate forward. This is going to bring you back down to the ground just slightly faster than it would have if you just let your car float. Same thing actually applies for going up for the aerial itself. This just gives you another leg up over players if you're trying to beat them to that high aerial, or if you're trying to beat them back down to the ground. So there you have it, 8 Rocket League life hacks. If any of those were new to you, drop me a comment down below and let me know which one. And if you like this video, it would be awesome if you smashed those like and subscribe buttons. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.